Okay, the next sutta is 55.26. That's Savati. Now on that occasion, the householder, Anatta Pindika, was sick, afflicted, gravely ill. Then the householder, Anatta Pindika, addressed the man thus, Come, good man, approach the venerable Sariputta, pay homage to him in my name with your head at his feet, and say, Venerable sir, the householder, Anatta Pindika, is sick, afflicted, gravely ill. He pays homage to the venerable Sariputta with his head at his feet. Then say, it would be good, Venerable Sir, if the Venerable Sariputta would come to the residence of the householder, Nata Pindika, out of compassion. Stop here for a moment. This Anatta Pindika, his name uh, is a nickname uh, because he provides uh, for orphans. Uh, he looks after orphans. Uh, that's why he's called Anatta Pindika. Uh, but his actual name, I think, is Udatta. Uh, and he's a, he's a great fan of Venerable Sariputta. La. Of all the monks, la, he appreciates the Venerable Sariputta the most. La. That's why when he is dying, la, he asks his uh, workers to go and summon Venerable Sariputta. La. Yes, Master, the man replied. And he approached the Venerable Sariputta, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and delivered his message. The Venerable Sariputta consented by silence. Then in the morning, the Venerable Sariputta dressed and taking bowl and robe, went to the residence of the householder Anatta Pindika with the Venerable Ananda as his companion. He then sat down in the appointed seat and said to the householder Anatta Pindika, I hope you are bearing up, householder. I hope you are getting better. I hope your painful feelings are subsiding and not increasing, and that their subsiding, not their increase, is to be discerned. And Anatta Pindika said, I am not bearing up, Venerable Sir. I am not getting better. Strong, painful feelings are increasing in me, not subsiding. And their increase, not their subsiding, is to be discerned. And Venerable Sariputta said, You, householder, do not have that distrust towards the Buddha, which the uninstructed whirling possesses, because of which the latter, with the breakup of the body after death, is reborn in the plane of misery, in a bad destination, in the nether world, in hell. You have confirmed confidence in the Buddha. Thus the Blessed One is a teacher of devas and humans, etc. As you consider within yourself that confirmed confidence in the Buddha, your pains may subside on the spot. You, householder, do not have that distrust towards the Dhamma which the uninstructed worldling possesses, cause of which the latter is reborn the plane of misery in hell. You have confirmed confidence in the Dhamma thus. The Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One, to be personally experienced by the wise. As you consider within yourself that confirmed confidence in the Dhamma, your pains may subside on the spot. You, householder, do not have that distrust towards the Sangha, which the uninstructed worldling possesses, this cause of which the latter is reborn in the plane of misery in hell. You have confirmed confidence in the Sangha thus. The Sangha of the Blessed One's disciples is practicing the good way, the straight way, etc. As you consider within yourself that confirmed confidence in the Sangha, your pains may subside on the spot. You, householder, do not, that, do not have that immorality which the uninstructed worldly possesses, because of which the latter is reborn in the plane of misery in hell. You have those virtues dear to the noble ones and broken, leading to concentration. As you consider within yourself those virtues dear to the noble ones, your pains may subside on the spot. You, householder, do not have that wrong view which the uninstructed whirling possesses, because of which the latter is reborn in the plane of misery in hell. You have right view. As you consider within yourself that right view, your pains may subside on the spot. You, householder, do not have wrong intention wrong speech, wrong action, wrong livelihood, wrong effort, wrong recollection, wrong concentration, wrong knowledge, wrong liberation, which the uninstructed whirling possesses, because of which the latter is reborn in the plane of misery in hell. You have right, right intention or right thoughts, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right recollection, right concentration, right knowledge, right liberation. As you consider within yourself that right liberation, your pains may subside on the spot. Then the pains of the householder Anatta Pindika subsided on the spot. 
Then the householder Anatta Pindika served the Venerable Sariputta and the Venerable Ananda from his own dish. When the Venerable Sariputta had finished his meal and had put away his bowl, the householder Anatta Pindika took a low seat and sat down to one side. And the Venerable Sariputta thanked him with these verses. When one has faith in the Tathagata, unshakable and well established, and good conduct built on virtue, dear to the noble ones and praised, when one has confidence in the Sangha and view that has been rectified, they say that one is not poor, that one's life is not in vain. Therefore, the person of intelligence, remembering the Buddha's teachings, should be devoted to faith and virtue, to confidence and vision of the Dhamma. Then the Venerable Sariputta, having thanked the, the householder Anatta Pindika with these verses, rose from his seat and departed. Then the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him and sat down to one side. The Blessed One then said to him, Now, Ananda, where are you coming from in the middle of the day? And he said, The householder Anatta Pindika, Venerable Sir, has been exhorted by the Venerable Sariputta with such and such an exhortation. And Buddha said, Sariputta is wise, Ananda. Sariputta has great wisdom in so far as he can analyze the four factors of stream entry in ten modes. That's the end of the sutta. So here, the Venerable Sariputta, he came to see this uh, Anatta Pindika. And Anatta Pindika thought that he was going to die. La. Then the Venerable Sariputta re reminded him la, that he has these uh, factors of stream entry, la, unshakable faith in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, and the uh, Aryan Sila, la, moral conduct. And then also reminded him uh, that he has these eight factors of the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, plus right knowledge and right liberation. Now this is right knowledge and right liberation uh, is normally uh, only used for the Arahan, and Anatta Pindika is not an Arahan, but uh, there is uh, two or three suttas uh, there. This right knowledge and right liberation uh, is mentioned uh, even for the Sotapanna. So what is meant uh, is that uh, it is not right knowledge, it is not perfect knowledge. Uh, it is partial knowledge. Uh, and right liberation is not full liberation, uh, it is also partial liberation. Uh, because once a person has become a Sotapanna, he definitely will attain liberation, a maximum of seven more lifetimes. So he's already on the path to liberation. There's no stopping him from becoming liberated. Only thing is a matter of time. So in that sense, he has attained partial liberation. So you see, this Venerable Sariputta is very skillful. Mention these things uh, to, to remind this Anatta Pindika uh, that he is already an Arya. Uh, so he became so happy uh, that all his uh, sickness disappeared. So a lot of sickness uh, has to do with our mind. Uh, if you are very happy, uh, you forgot about our sickness already. The next sutta is 55.30. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Vesali in the great wood in the hall with the peak roof. Then Nandaka, the minister of the Lichavis, approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him and sat down to one side. The Blessed One then said to him, Nandaka, a noble disciple who possesses four things is a stream enterer, no longer bound to the nether world, fixed in destiny, with enlightenment as his destination. What for? Here Nandaka, a noble disciple possesses confirmed confidence in the Buddha. He possesses confirmed confidence in the Dhamma possesses confirmed confidence in the Sangha. He possesses the virtues dear to the noble ones, unbroken, unblemished, leading to concentration. A noble disciple who possesses these four things is a stream enterer, Sotapanna, no longer bound to the nether world, fixed in destiny, with enlightenment as his destination. Further, Nandaka, a noble disciple who possesses these four things, becomes endowed with long lifespan, whether celestial or human. He becomes endowed with beauty, whether celestial or human. He becomes endowed with happiness, whether celestial or human. He becomes endowed with fame, whether celestial or human. He becomes endowed with sovereignty, whether celestial or human. 
Now I say this Nandaka without having heard it from another ascetic or Brahmin. Rather, I say just what I have known, seen and understood by myself. And this was said, a man said to Nandaka, the minister of the Lichavis, It is time for your bath, sir. And he said, Enough now, I say, with that external bath. This internal bath will suffice, namely confidence in the Blessed One. That's the end of the sutta. So, in the last part, nah, the man told him, Time to take your bath. He said, No need for the outside bath. Nah, my inside already taken the bath. <laughs> This uh, last part of the Buddha's teaching uh, is quite interesting. An Aryan disciple uh, possesses four things, you know. These four things in Pali is called Ayu, Vano, Sukang, Balang. Sometimes when we do chanting, uh, the monks do chanting, uh, they chant this Ayu, Vano, Sukang, Balang. Ayu is long life. Second one is uh, Ayu, Vano. Vano is beauty. Sukang is happiness. Balang is strength or power. So here it refers to fame and sovereignty. So if we become a Sotapanna in this lifetime, next time if we are reborn as a human being or in heaven, we will possess these four things. That's why it is so good to become an Arya. There's nothing better than becoming an Arya, at least a Sotapanna. Once you become a Sotapanna, then you can slowly get out of Sangsara. Don't have to finish in one lifetime, lah. since there's a maximum of seven more lifetimes, lah. slowly lah. enjoy. Lah. Every lifetime you come back, lah. sure enjoy one because you have these four things. Ayubano Sukang Balang. The next sutta is 55.36. Buddha said, Monks, when a noble disciple possesses four things, the devas are elated and speak of his similarity to themselves. What for? Here, monks, a noble disciple possesses confirmed confidence in the Buddha. Uh, thus, the Blessed One is a teacher of devas and humans, the enlightened one, the Blessed One, etc. To those devatas who passed away from here in the human world and were reborn there in the heavenly world, possessing confirmed confidence in the Buddha, the thought occurs. As the noble disciple possesses the same confirmed confidence in the Buddha that we possess when we passed away there and were reborn here, he will come into the presence of the devas. Again, monks, a noble disciple possesses confirmed confidence in the Dhamma, confirmed confidence in the Sangha, and he possesses the virtues dear to the noble ones, unbroken, unblemished, conducive to concentration. To those devatas who passed away from here and were reborn in the heavenly world, possessing the virtue of the noble ones, the thought occurs that this noble disciple uh, will come into the presence of the devas. When monks, a noble disciple possesses these four things, the devas are elated and speak of his similarity to themselves. Uh, that's the end of the sutta. It's quite interesting. Uh, what the Buddha is saying uh, is that uh, if we have these four factors of stream entry, uh, the devas uh, will be very happy with us. Uh. They know uh, that one day uh, we will join them in the heaven. Uh. So they are waiting for us uh, to uh, to be a uh, member there. Uh. So if that is the case, uh, once you become an Arya, then they keep an eye on you. Uh, must keep an eye on our member. <laughs> anyway, if you have the virtues of an Arya, your good karma itself uh, is a great protection. 55.37 On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling among the Sakyans at Kapilavatu in Igrodas Park. Then Mahanama, the Sakyan, approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said, Venerable Sir, in what way is one a lay follower? And the Buddha said, When Mahanama, one has gone for refuge to the Buddha, the Dhamma and Sangha, one is then a lay follower. In what way, Venerable Sir, is a lay follower accomplished in virtue? When Mahanama, a lay follower, abstains from the destruction of life, from taking what is not given, from sexual misconduct, from false speech, and from wines, liquor, and intoxicants that are a basis for negligence. The lay follower is accomplished in virtue. In what way, Venerable Sir, is a lay follower accomplished in faith? Here, Mahanama, a lay follower is a person of faith. He places faith in the enlightenment of the Tathagata. In that way, a lay follower is accomplished in faith. 
In what way, Venerable Sir, is a lay follower accomplished in generosity? Here, Mahanama, a lay follower dwells at home with a mind devoid of the stain of stinginess, freely generous, open-handed, delighting in relinquishment, one devoted to charity, delighting in giving and sharing. In that way, a lay follower is accomplished in generosity. In what way, Venerable Sir, is a lay follower accomplished in wisdom? Here, Mahanama, a lay follower is wise. He possesses wisdom directed to arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative, leading to the complete destruction of suffering. In that way, a lay follower is accomplished in wisdom. That's the end of the sutta. So this is also a very important sutta. Here, the first one, uh, the Buddha defines uh, a Buddhist. Uh, a lay follower is a Buddhist. Uh, a uh, Buddhist uh, is defined as a person who takes refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Only the three refuges, uh, uh, now, but nowadays people talk about four refuges, uh, uh, but actually it's only three. Uh. They have added uh, the refuge with the teacher, uh, that means the monk or something. But actually uh, we take refuge only in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. And you don't necessarily have to go to a monk to take refuge, you can take refuge yourself. And... Uh, Taking refuge uh, means uh, you have trust la, in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. You uh, acknowledge la, that uh, the teachings of the Buddha, the best uh, in the world, uh, the Buddha has taught uh, what is true, what is reality. La. And the Sangha is the disciples of the Buddha who carry on his message, la, prolong the sasana and teach the Dhamma to the world. La. And then a Buddhist uh, has uh, moral conduct, uh, virtue, uh, when he keeps the five precepts, uh, not to kill, not to take what is not given, uh, to refrain from sexual misconduct, from false speech and from intoxicants. Uh. And then uh, a lay follower has faith, uh, when he has faith uh, in the enlightenment of the Tathagata, that the Buddha is an enlightened being. Uh, there are very few enlightened beings in the world. Uh. And then uh, a lay follower or a Buddhist uh, is generous uh, if he is not stingy, uh, he or she is not stingy, uh, freely generous, uh, open-handed, uh, devoted to charity. Uh. And a uh, lay follower or a Buddhist uh, is wise uh, when he can see uh, rising and passing away. Rising is and passing away uh, to refers uh, to impermanence. Uh, everything in the world... Uh, arises due to conditions and passes away due, due to conditions. La. So this is very important. La. We have to see uh, impermanence in everything. La. When you see impermanence in everything, uh, then uh, there is some vega. There's a sense of urgency la, to practice, knowing uh, that your life uh, very soon will come to an end. A lot of people think, uh, wait until I'm old, uh, wait a few more years. La. <laughs> and a few more years comes, uh, you find uh, yeah, your body uh, is too weak uh, to practice. I became a monk at the age of 35. I never regretted. The only regret I have uh, is uh, a little bit uh, is that uh, if I could have renounced earlier, it would have been better. Uh. You know why? Because uh, after the age of 45, uh, you want to be a forest monk or so, quite impossible. Uh, because at the age of 45, uh, I found uh, all my body heat slowly going off. Before the age of 45, uh, when I lived in uh, caves, uh, the wind can be very strong. I sit in meditation. Uh, the wind very strong also, no problem, because my body was like a, like fire, uh, emitting a lot of heat. But at the age of 45, the wind started to go into my bones. <laughs> could feel it going into my bones, and I cannot stand the, the direct, direct wind blowing on me. Uh, if that is the case, uh, then... You cannot be a forest monk. Why? Because forest monks, they have to sleep in the forest, on the ground. And sometimes you sleep on the ground. Nah? You just put a plastic sheet. Nah? There's no uh, mattress for you. No tilam for you. So you just sleep on the uh, bare floor. Nah? It can be very cold. Uh, especially you go to forest areas. Nah? Or you sleep in a cave. Nah? Uh, so after 45, nah? uh, that type of life nah? is difficult already. Uh, so if some people still want to wait, nah, it's no time already. <laughs> 55.40 On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling among the Sakyans at Kapilavatu in Igrodas Park. 
Then Nandia, the Sakyan, approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said, Venerable Sir, when the four factors of stream and tree are completely and totally non-existent in a noble disciple, would that noble disciple be one who dwells negligently? And the Buddha said, Nandia, I say that one in whom the four factors of stream and tree are completely and totally absent is an outsider, one who stands in the faction of worldlings. But Nandia, as to how a noble disciple is one who dwells negligently and one who dwells diligently, listen to that and attend closely, I will speak. Yes, Venerable Sir, Nandia, the Sakyan replied. The Blessed One said, And how Nandia is a noble disciple, one who dwells negligently. Here, Nandia, a noble disciple possesses confirmed confidence in the Buddha. Content with that confirmed confidence in the Buddha, he does not make further effort for solitude by day, nor for seclusion at night. When he thus dwells negligently, there is no gladness. When there is no gladness, there is no rap, there is no delight, pity. When there is no delight, there is no tranquility. When there is no tranquility, he dwells in suffering. The mind of one who suffers does not become concentrated. When the mind is not concentrated, phenomena or dhamma do not become manifest. Because dhamma do not become manifest, he is reckoned as one who dwells negligently. Again, Nandia, a noble disciple possesses confirmed confidence in the dhamma. He possesses confirmed confidence in the sangha. He possesses the virtues dear to the noble ones, unbroken, unblemished, leading to concentration. Content with those virtues dear to the noble ones, he does not make further effort for solitude by day, nor for seclusion at night. When he thus dwells negligently, there is no gladness. Uh, there is no, when there is no gladness, there is no delight. When there is no delight, there is no tranquility, etc. Uh, and phenomena or dhamma do not become manifest. He is reckoned as one who dwells negligently. It is in this way, Nandia, that a noble disciple is one who dwells negligently. And how Nandia is a noble disciple, one who dwells diligently. Here, Nandia, a noble disciple possesses confirmed confidence in the Buddha. He makes further effort, not content with that confirmed confidence in the Buddha. He makes further effort for solitude by day and for seclusion at night. When he thus dwells diligently, gladness is born. When he is gladdened, uh, delight is born. When the mind is uplifted by delight, the body becomes tranquil. One tranquil in body experiences happiness. The mind of one who is happy becomes concentrated. When the mind is concentrated, phenomena or dhamma become manifest. Because phenomena become manifest, become manifest means becomes clear, la, can be seen clearly. La. He is reckoned as one who dwells diligently. Again, Nandia, a noble disciple, possesses confirmed confidence in the Dhamma, confirmed confidence in the Sangha, and he possesses the virtues dear to the noble one. Not content with these, uh, he makes further effort for solitude by day and for seclusion at night. When he thus dwells diligently, gladness is born, and from gladness, uh, delight, tranquility, etc., and then phenomena become manifest. He is reckoned as one who dwells diligently. It is in this way, Nandia, that a noble disciple is one who dwells diligently. That's the end of the sutta. So here this uh, Anama asked the eh, Nandia. Nandia asked the Buddha about a noble disciple uh, who does not possess the factors of stream and tree. Uh. But then, uh, if a person does not possess the factors of stream entry, he cannot be a noble disciple. He is an ordinary disciple, a putujana disciple. That's why the Buddha said, uh, if he does not possess the four factors of stream entry, uh, he is considered an outsider. He stands uh, with the ordinary uh, worldlings. Uh, because uh, you, another way you can call him an outsider uh, is that because his faith is not unshakable, uh, Today he calls himself a Buddhist, uh, another day uh, he can change his religion. Uh, so he's not uh, really a Buddhist yet. Uh, he's only a Buddhist uh, when he enters the Noble Eightfold Path. And a person enters the Noble Eightfold Path uh, by right view. 
uh, you must possess right view uh, to enter the Noble Eightfold Path. And when you possess right view, uh, uh, you have entered the stream. Uh, you attain stream entry, you become an Arya. Uh. So if a person does not uh, learn enough Dhamma, does not listen enough uh, to the Buddha's uh, original discourses, uh, his faith uh, is not unshakable faith. Uh. Any time I can change his faith. So that's why he's considered an outsider. Uh. Then the Buddha talked about the noble disciple. Uh, Firstly, the noble disciple uh, possesses these four factors of stream entry. Uh, he has unshakable faith in the Buddha, unshakable faith in the Dhamma, unshakable faith in the Sangha, and he possesses Aryan moral conduct. Uh. Now, after attaining these four factors of stream entry, uh, he has become a, a Sotapanna. Then, uh, if he does not make further effort uh, for solitude by day and for seclusion at night. Solitude by day means uh, he uh, goes into seclusion, you know, he does not mix with people. Once a person has understood the Dhamma, he knows uh, there is nothing more important uh, than practicing the holy path. Uh, then he does not associate with people. Uh, if uh, somebody uh, is a Buddhist and uh, still wants to go holiday here, holiday there, go to China, go overseas and all that. Nah. He cannot be uh, from here. Lah. He's not a uh, Sotapanna who dwells uh, diligently. Lah. He's a negligent uh, uh, stream enterer. Lah. Uh, and if he's negligent, lah, then he cannot progress. Lah. There's no gladness and there's no delight, etc. Uh, the mind cannot become concentrated lah, so that he cannot see things clearly as they really are. Lah. Uh, so, a uh, noble disciple uh, is uh, diligent uh, if he makes further effort uh, for seclusion, uh, becomes aloof from others, doesn't want to mix with society uh, uh, and uh, practices, uh, spends most of his time uh, studying the Dhamma and meditating. Uh, and then he make, can make progress uh, because uh, when he makes effort, uh, then the mind uh, becomes focused. Uh, uh, if he meditates, uh, and when the mind is focused, uh, it's not scattered, uh, then gladness arises, uh, followed by delight, tranquility, uh, concentration. Uh, and then when he, a person attains concentration, it means he has attained the jhanas. Uh, and when a person, person attains the jhanas, uh, the five hindrances fall away, uh, so that he can see things as they really are. Yatta Bhutta Jnana Dasana uh, and that's very important because only when you can see things as they really are that there is a chance for liberation uh, so uh, this is about a noble disciple and whether he's diligent or not diligent ok next sutta is 55.53 on one occasion the blessed one was dwelling at Baranasi in the deer park at Isipatana that the lay follower, Dhammadina, together with 500 lay followers, approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him and sat down to one side. Sitting to one side, the lay follower, Dhammadina, then said to the Blessed One, Let the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, exhort us and instruct us in a way that may lead to our wealth and happiness for a long time. And the Buddha said, Therefore, Dhammadina, you should train yourselves thus. From time to time, we will enter and dwell upon those discourses spoken by the Tathagata that are deep, deep in meaning, supramundane, that means uh, transcending the world, dealing with emptiness. It is in such a way that you should train yourselves. And they said, Remember, sir, it is not easy for us dwelling in a home crowded with children, enjoying Karsi sandalwood, wearing garlands, scents and unguents, receiving gold and silver, that is money, eh? from time to time to enter and dwell upon those discourses spoken by the Tathagata that are deep, deep in meaning, supramundane, dealing with emptiness. As we are established in the five training rules, let the Blessed One teach us the Dhamma further. And the Buddha said, Therefore, Dhammadina, you should train yourselves thus. We will possess confirm confidence in the Buddha, confirm confidence in the Dhamma, confirm confidence in the Sangha. We will possess the virtues dear to the noble ones, unbroken, unblemished, leading to concentration. This is in such a way that you should train yourselves. And they said, Remember, sir, as to those four factors 
dream and tree taught by the Blessed One. These things exist in us and we live in conformity with those things. For Venerable Sir, we possess confirmed confidence in the Buddha, the Dhamma and Sangha and we possess the virtues dear to the Noble Ones, unbroken, unblemished, leading to concentration. And the Buddha said, It is a gain for you, Dhammadina. It is well gained by you, Dhammadina. You have declared the fruit of stream entry. That's the end of the sutta. So here, you can see that when lay people come to the Buddha for advice, the Buddha asked them to, to study the discourses of the Buddha, the suttas. For lay people, it's quite difficult to practice meditation. So lay people uh, should concentrate uh, on studying the suttas and understanding the suttas. Uh. When you understand the suttas, uh, then you will attain right view. And once you attain right view, uh, you will naturally uh, come to have uh, unshakable faith in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha uh, and you will naturally keep the Arin Sila uh, consisting of the seven precepts. Uh. So uh, if you have these uh, four factors of stream entry, eh, then it is, the Buddha says, eh, it is a gain for you, it is well gained by you, eh, and you have declared the fruit of stream entry. Eh, eh, so you will never be reborn in the woeful planes of existence. Eh. So I'll stop here. Eh.